it's a bromance. I love these men. Mr. Shelby Kennedy on the bottom of the screen and my my running buddy, the great Philip White up on the top left. And the song is I'm a Survivor, Reba McIntyre. Take us back to the day you wrote it, fellas. We'll start with you, Shelby. Well, uh, I'm going to thank Philip for this. First of all, I got to say, I love seeing good things happen to good people. And this is one of those. And Philip, I love you. Um, for me, Bart, I remember I was working at Lyric Street Records at the time, serving in director of A&R. And, and I hadn't written in a while. And I remember asking Philip because, look, when he wrote I'm Moving On, they got everybody's attention. Yeah. You know? So One of the greatest I, songs in history, by the way. Yes, and, and you know what? There's another story behind that you need to get with Philip on uh, that's really good. But but anyways, I was working there, and I remember telling Philip, you know, I wanted to get back into writing if I could, and I just knew it was going to be rusty, and would you be patient if we could do some of this? And Philip was gracious, and it was like, yeah. So he was writing for Murrah Music at the time, and mm -hmm. Philip, I remember coming over there, getting up in the kitchen, to write yeah. and I remember walking around in the kitchen then it was Luke Bryan, right? He was yeah, y'all yeah, you know, you know. got any coffee boys? <laughs> <laughs> but but Philip kind of sat down and, and we wrote a handful of things and it didn't take long for this. And and Philip, I'll say this on the front end, he's got the gift. I've known a ton of writers and Bart, you've you've worked with all of them, but some writers think in blocks. You know, I'm a word at a time, a line at a time. And Philip would just spit out two lines at a time. And I was like, what? The? So the rust on my wheels appeared even. You know, by the way, time. Shelby, we love him and we hate him. Most, <laughs> he, he's just one of the greatest guys, most beautiful women, amazing songwriter. We love you, Philip. We're a little jelly. Just well, like you, know <laughs> you know, when Shelby asked me, I, I was over there playing songs, I think, for the flats when he asked me. And it was a no-brainer because I just love Shelby. We always uh, were good buddies. And and I remember when we wrote I'm a Survivor, I don't know if you remember this, but, um, man, we wrote that song in about 30 minutes. And uh, anyway, I happened to throw it on the back end of a session. And Cindy Owen, who was working for Reba at the time, whose friends was Sherry, sent the song to Reba up in New York. Just Sherry's, my, Sherry's my wife, Bart. That's right. Who, yeah. And by the way, when I said beautiful women, I'm talking about your wife, Jill, and we're going to promote something y'all are doing in a minute. I, I love both of y'all, man. Jill Block, uh, <laughs> yeah. married Philip, and just she's done so much for songwriters through the years. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But uh, anyway, so Cindy sent it to, to Reba, and Reba, I think I got a call. I think Shelby talked to her too, but I was on a fishing boat with my brother. And at Kentucky Lake back when we had flip phones. And I remember answering and I didn't have good service. And I hear this like real country voice on the other end telling me that she'd heard the song and it was Reba. And I was thinking, who, who is this? I thought it was some of my family back in Alabama messing with me. Well, you know, that's... Just, hey, Bart, let me interrupt for a second because this really is bizarre because it was um, on a Friday because Philip. I'll, I remember this. It was on hold for Martina for a little bit. Came off hold. I went home and Sherry, my wife, was with Cindy Owen. She was at the house and this was Friday. And when Cindy found out it was off hold, she wanted to send it to Reba. Reba was doing Annie Get Your Gun on Broadway in New York. So it was overnighted on Friday to Reba. She heard it on Saturday. She got word she wanted me to leave it in Tony Brown's mailbox over and over. Great Oceania. producer, yeah. Yes, and so that was on Sunday to leave it there because Monday they were going to cut it. And it whoa, whoa, whoa! Friday. What? That's crazy talk. Or that is crazy talk. Friday to Monday, it was <laughs> heard, held, cut. And I remember Philip for all all your bunch that was working in Murrah. I left a message on their voicemail so when they got in monday they were finding out they were getting the cut that day but we bumped the song um they they already had the studio time well they were gonna you may have known or you may not have known at the time it's 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 her greatest hits record right and or did that right. appear on it and so always they always do. do two or three new songs on it and they're probably all right. going to be singles but i want to wind the clock back for a minute you said something that i want to do a little background for the audience on you threw it on a session Typically, you're going to go do four or five demos, and that's how right. you make a record, essentially, send it to the artist or 
people pitch it to artists. And that's how the song get recorded. Did you almost not put it on that session? Yeah, because it, I had that session like a, just a day or two after we wrote it and I had songs for it, but there's something about that song that I, I kind of knew that we had something when we wrote it. Um, and I think Shelby did too, but it was just, uh, it had, it had a vibe to it. And it's, so when Philip did the demo, I'm independent. I've got to figure out what am I going to do? Because you know what? Uh, publishers, they help pay for those demos. Right. For writing. I'm my own. And I really almost gave the publishing away just to be able to pay. My now let's explain to the to fans. Pay. That's the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, the money. that's the ownership. $200. And I looked at Shelby. I don't know. I said, Shelby, I'll, I'll give you the $200, but if you give up your publishing, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> Shelby, so I'll, my, I'll buy it from you. <laughs> so, but, but my ass was kickless. And uh, no, it was, but it really, it's one of those things where it's back to the divine again. It's like, yeah. because at the time, I mean, it's, it's funny. It's like money's money. And I'm sitting there thinking, what are the odds we get a cut? Like how many songs are demoed? They never get cut. Yeah. Right. And you're sitting there like, do I really need to spend? And really by God's grace. That's the time you were leaving. And so yeah. glad that you paid that demo bill man and well, uh, too, but that, you know seriously that's divine because guys we know a copyright that music's gonna outlive us all right two hundred dollars was like buying some original i don't know google stock all those years ago well good, for that song job. for that song but there's a lot of songs you're just like yeah. you flushed some money you know but it, it worked out good but that's just one of those interesting almost things that turned out to be beautiful for me so I was. Well, let, let me do this for a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go over this for a minute. You hadn't written in years. You get with Philip. Might have happened, might not. He throws on a session sort of as an afterthought. You get a call. It's sent out on the weekend. You get a call and y'all, rec it's recorded the next week. I mean, that's a meant to be thing if I've ever heard of one. It, it's divine. Well, it literally yeah. is. That's it was divine. divine. And I'll tell you, Shelby had to, uh, I'll never forget what he said to me. He said, man, I'm fixing to leave. Uh, Disney and an A and R, and he said, "I want to write. I hadn't wrote in years. I'm rusty, you know, but I've written. I've had a Ray Charles cut, and I'm like, okay. He's had a Ray Charles, and I'm in, you know. Well, while while we're talking about music royalty, you both come from royal families. You first, Philip. You're related to a couple or one of the greatest songwriters that ever lived. Uh, my third cousin is Spinner Oldham, who just went into the Songwriters Hall of Fame this year, and uh, he was one of the Swampers. And <laughs> that all and Shoals thing, man. I just yeah. finished Rick Hall's book. The late Rick Hall gave it to me years ago. Yeah. And I just read it, and I'm like, Spooner, 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 man. And he'd mm -hmm. write them almost on demand. Spooner did something else, and I want to ask you all this question. Then I'm going to get to your royalty in a minute. Spooner actually would write songs for artists and they would record them. It never works that way. You can write a song for an artist, but they almost never record it unless you write it with them. Did y'all think of Reba? Because I don't know who else could have recorded this song. I, I, I did. Well, I'm going to say, Philip, I don't know if you remember how we started this idea. It was Philip's idea. Philip was, and, and at the time, he was married to somebody. He was saying, you know what? thinking about the Survivor television show. It was just kind of one of those things that he kind of mentioned. And then it was like, I was seeing where he was going. And I remember Philip, then it was like, we said, you know what? Do you ever wonder if somebody that was born prematurely is their whole life out of sync because they never are, they came too early. So everything's out of time. Mm -hmm. And then you know, Philip being Philip, I was born three months too early. The doctor gave me 30 days. He was like, oh, Philip White. Here we go, Philip. Thank you. And, and so that's just kind of how it went. And I don't know if you remember it that way, Philip, but it seems pretty clear to me. Yeah, that's I remember it fell out pretty quick. And, uh, you know, the, the television show was pretty popular, but I always felt like, you know, um, survivors were more than, you know, what was kind of being seen as survivors during that time and uh you know for me you know i've always tried to, uh and i know shelby has too but i've always tried to be a man of integrity and i've also tried to write songs with integrity and i think this song was full of integrity 
Well, brother, I'm going to read something. I, I don't know if you've ever heard this. It's a guy named Marshall Bowden of Pop Matters. He says the song rings truer coming from her than it would from the likes of Hill and Twain. While adding, and this is my favorite part, it manages to combine the trials and tribulations of a premature baby and a single mom up into one ball of wax and still come out sounding like an anthem of personal victory. No small feat. I echo that, man. Well, wow, thank wow. you for sharing that, Bart. That's cool. Yeah, and, yeah, and then for Marshall, that's stout because he's going to tell it like it is. So it, they, they, you know, and it did well. It was number three on the country charts. I think it was top 40 or 50 on the pop charts. And, Bart, yeah, you know, you know, on it, R, and it was on her 30, number one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and when, it, when it peaked, guys, it was right in the 9-11. I don't know yeah. if you remember. Because oh, it, was, it would have been in 01. That's right. Sure. Yeah, no, was, the album came October of 01. So the single was peaking, right? In peaking the it because they put it out charts. right for the record. Yeah. Yeah, the charts were real weird then. But even for what the song meant at that time, it kind of had another meaning. Too. Well, my buddy David Israelite at the National Music Publisher Association finally convinced, made TikTok pay. Have you seen the TikTok challenge? And you've got 3 million views on this song as of last week, boys. Rebuild. Well, I'll one. tell you a story. I, I sent this to Shelby. <laughs> but in L.A. at our mine and your buddy, Mac Davis's Celebration of Life. Mm -hmm. And uh, Reba pulls in right when me and Jill did. And uh, she comes up to me. She said, have you seen TikTok? And I said, no, I'm, I'm not a member of TikTok. She said, this song, you know, Survivor's Gone Crazy. Wow. And it was like, I think 21 million streams like during yeah. that time. And she said, uh, it's now my second biggest song in uh, other than Fancy. Wow. And, wow. Uh, so, oh, wow, that's crazy. I don't know what that means, but. You know, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a nice check. Is what it means, guys. Well, so Phil, you should. Phil, yeah, Philip texted it to me, <laughs> and then when I saw it, I was like, "Well." And then I found out that one thing that was really kind of cool that Reba did: people were making funny little vignettes. That's right. You know, and I, it, I think there were three million vignettes. Is that where I got that? There's 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 so many people that have done yeah. this. It's a yeah, challenge, it, TikTok yeah, challenge. Yeah. There's a ton, but when it really ramped up is when Reba did her own funny. Yeah, yeah, yep. And and that kind of took it to another level. Well, she's got she sings to a donkey in it, if I remember. And she's got <laughs> feeding this donkey because I'm a survivor. So Man, they turned their back. Yeah. Well, not their back. <laughs> they really yeah. end on it, you know. Well, yeah. well, she did that. Uh, she came back from L.A. after I seen her at Max thing, because uh, her and Mac were good buddies and. Uh, yeah. I saw it uh, the last time I was with Mac personally. Reba was over there before he died. Yeah. So, yeah. It was, uh, so she came back and she did a, a new album. It's a box set where she did re, uh, recuts and things. And she actually did ours twice on there. There's a dance mix. And then there's a new version she did with it, like a ballad version she did with Dave Cobb. And that, that version gives me chills. It's I hadn't up. heard that. I'm all over that oh, yeah. as soon as this ends, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, hey, the name of that album, just so everybody knows, it's revived, remixed, revisited. And like Philip was saying, we had one that was remixed. Um, and then we had one that was revisited. And so Philip and I have been re-blessed, right? You know? Well, and you she were blessed. A, she, did a video. she did a video. She never did a video for this, but it's really? with the piano vocal that Philip's talking about. She did a video finally, so that's online too. People well, a lot of people know it because she decided it was going to be the theme to a TV show. They they didn't they tweak the lyrics a little bit? Were you all involved in that? Or? We, we were, yeah, because she wasn't going to be a single mom that working two jobs in this. Right. So Philip and I it took us what about five minutes to put a menu together. Here's your choices. <laughs> yeah. uh, you just pick whatever yeah. she did. So that's how. And it well, you know she put the, she's always been the most classy lady unbelievable uh, so and, a lot we meet a lot of our heroes and go eh. whatever the public thinks of her she's better she is yeah. i went on i've had three songs recorded by her i had another hit called he gets that from me that she wanted us to rewrite and she sat on the phone with us for three hours rewriting this song and she wouldn't take any writer's credit and it was Man. just amazing <laughs> Hey, Bart, you know, the other thing in this, very sentimental for me, my dad gave her her first record deal. 
So let's so, talk about your royalty lineage. Perfect transition. Well, you, you're, well, you're, you're from a regal music industry family, Shelby. Well, I'm blessed to grow up in the environment we grow up, you know, we, we just happen to be here. But my dad ran Mercury Records. He was a A-team musician first. Uh, and then he produced a lot of the, the, the Mercury Records. He pretty much built the country, you know, division. But, right. but that was Reba, Stadler Brothers, Tom T. Hall, Rodriguez, J. Lee Lewis, and, you know, a lot of that. And he always gravitated towards like the Roger Miller and the Tom T. Hall and the Stadler Brothers. They were writers. Yep. that were unique and Reba could pick a song she she was like a writer it's like he was always into the unique songs for the unique yep. talent and stuff but with giving her this this record deal I met her I think when I was 14 I've got this great picture we're on a bus going to her first fanfare but she couldn't play it because she had just signed it was too early and she's sitting with her mom and you know it's just one of those it's surreal to know that's when it began. And then how does this, this um, career or, or this, yeah, I guess career path, it's really a circle. Yeah. yeah. It, it just comes around, but it spirals. Every time yeah. it comes around, it's up a level. And then it just Somebody of, asked me what the music industry was like today. I said, Dick, it's the best of times and the worst of times. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to be a survivor, really, if you're going to, you got to have thick skin if you're going to do it. But, you know, one of my best days is worth a hundred of the bad ones and what we get to do guys. Said, you well. know, I, I got to tell you the story. Uh, I was telling Shelby the story earlier today. Um, my mother-in-law's caretaker is from Africa and she's got this real thick, you know, African accent. And anyway, she, uh, she was married like an arranged marriage uh, about the time survivor came out and her ex-husband poured hot oil on her daughter and she was burnt like all over so she moved from africa to america and uh raised them two kids uh by herself and and she found out i wrote i'm a survivor and she literally cried wow she got, it, it, well, that was my song that got me through that moment of time and you know that's that's why we do this yeah and i'm going to follow up on that line in a minute but shoals soul you're talking yeah. about man i don't know if there's ever been a place we could argue memphis maybe where the music is just pure and organic you're involved in a really cool thing down there tell us about it phil well i kind of came back down here part-time i'm just still in nashville but uh i'm here part-time now when i signed a deal with fame Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, so there's a girl from my hometown named Lillian Glanton that wanted to start a songwriters festival. You know who <laughs> discovered Lillian, don't you? Who's that? <laughs> I take credit. She was All 14, right. walked into <laughs> NSAI, and I went, unbelievable. I love her. Yeah. So I think, man, we've had a really successful year. It was this past November. We're gearing up for. Uh, you know, the next one this November, and I think in the next two or three years, it's probably going to be the biggest songwriters festival in the world. Where do we uh, find out about website? It's MSSongFest.com. Yeah, it's the jam. Now, Shelby, you've got a really cool new thing you're involved in. And by the way, you really helped us pass the Music Modernization Act with the power of tune course. So I want to thank you for that, too. You were there. Well, then, so. I think that thank you can't equal. I mean, what, look, you fight the battles for all of it, Mark. Well, I'm it's you, I no, wouldn't I wouldn't if I could do what you could do. But let so. me look. <laughs> it's not only you fight the battles, you win the battle. Well, that's thank you. That's, more important. So thank that's you. That's what we're here yeah. for. And you know what? Songwriters history records one of the first ones is a guy named David sitting on a hill singing psalms to God. You should be paid fairly. So there, there you, you go. go. Yeah. So <laughs> you you're know, new, Bart. I know for firsthand that you do fight all the battles because I fought some of them with you. And we almost of, got into a fist fight one night. Yeah. Not me and you, but another guy. Yeah. Me, know, don't mess with my yeah. riders. You know. Uh, you know, me and you, uh, of all the things I've ever done, you know, knowing that, you know, my kid, when they sell their catalogs, to be able to pay capital gain, to know that we, I was a small part of that, that's probably my proudest moment. Well, thank you for your service on our board. And, you know, um, don't go up against the songwriters, just saying. 
So Shelby, what's your new, your new enterprise? Yeah, I'm part of something we built out called Amazing Songs. The website for that is amazing-songs.com. That's all you type in. But what it is, started thinking about today's world and you, and you think about songwriters. What are the odds that a songwriter lives in a city that's a music center, that has a PRO, that has publishers, that has labels? That And look, there's only a few of those and there's talent all over the place as both of you guys know. So we're trying to figure out what do you do in that kind of world to connect them with professionals. So we created Amazing Songs. Basically, you could look at it like a storage, like Dropbox for a writer's work tapes, demos, and everything. But the difference between that and Amazing Songs is once you put these in your private digital locker, you can mark them discoverable because we're letting verified executives that are creative executives on the back end. Yeah go in and they can search everything that people have made available so they can discover songs without the writer pitching it because they don't have the relationship to do it. But the executive can go discover a writer or discover those uncut songs that are going to haunt us all till the day we, we die that they're not cut. So publishers can use it. Writers can use it. It's a songwriter and a song discovery platform that's professional. Everything retains its first use right because it's private. It's not a public release. I so love that. It's a I love that. Yeah. You smart guy, Shelby Kennedy. Let's Trying. pick up where we left off before this with what a moving story. The lady from Africa and her daughter who was a victim. I cannot imagine. And I ask this a lot in this series. I don't know. You got to be in the top two or three songs ever. This thing gets played at the most important emotional moments of people's lives. What do you hear from from people who, whose this song has lifted and gotten through things like you mentioned, Philip, it, it's got to be phenomenal and how rewarding, man. It, you know what? It really is. Uh, you know that story that Eunice uh, told me about her daughter moved me hard. But I mean, I've had thousands over it's the years. It's got to be. It's got to be on the people that came up and said, you know, this song. You know, this song is my song. It helped me get through you know, a lot of different things. And, and, you know, to, uh, written a lot of songs, had a lot of songs recorded, but, you know, I'm a survivor and I'm moving on yeah. are my two favorite because they change people's lives. Yeah. Shelby, same thing. I'm guessing. Absolutely. But you know what? I got to say this, Philip, it's great. You can go out and hear Philip singing this and it's, it's great. <laughs> but I'm that right brain, left brain. Don't forget. I'm liking this, executive workplace a lot of people don't even know uh, i'm a writer so <laughs> tell anybody. well so, that's over now shelby canada no. this is national so <laughs> well, but, it, but it is nice it's i mean it is because i've seen some of the emails when people find out you do find out what it meant to people and then you realize it's all divine it's not by our design this is a life lesson it's like when you look over your shoulder and you look at all the best things that happened to you in your life or in your career when you look at those best things, none of them were planned by you. Yeah. None of them. Yeah. And I know everybody's success story, and I promise, not one of them was planned by them at all. It's divine. I'll end this with an imagination moment. I've been around you guys so much and thousands of other songwriters. When, when we're somewhere not necessarily in a musical setting, it's not at the Bluebird, it's on the streets, it's in D.C., and I go, hey, this is a songwriter, and they go, and it's kind of snarky and skeptical. What would you write? I'd love to see their face when you go on this, <laughs> which is the story behind the song this week with my buddy Shelby Kennedy and Philip White for the Tennessean and Tennessean.com.